Breaking tonight at 6 o'clock, a major decision in the Delphi murders trial. The judge in this case now says the jury will be allowed to hear alleged confessions from the suspect, Richard Allen. Our senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel is digging into this latest order. Bob? We now know a jury will get to hear confessions that Richard Allen allegedly made while in prison. We just received the judge's ruling on that, and it will have a big impact on the upcoming trial in the Delphi murders. The state claims Richard Allen allegedly made at least 61 confessions about the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German while behind bars. Allen's attorneys asked the judge to suppress those confessions, claiming they were coerced and came at a time when Allen was suffering from mental illness caused by his incarceration. Today, the judge ruled that essentially all the confessions could be presented at trial. So that includes confessions Allen made to his family, confessions he made to prison guards and other inmates and the warden at the Westville Correctional Facility, and confessions Allen made to a prison doctor, the psychologist assigned to work with him inside the Indiana State Prison System. In her ruling, the judge wrote, statements given to the defendant's family members were voluntarily not coerced by any state action and were not made under threats of violence or improper influence. And she said the court finds that statements given by the defendant to Dr. Walla, that psychologist, the warden, inmates, guards, medical personnel, mental health professionals, and law enforcement personnel were not coerced, were voluntary, were not the result of interrogation by the state or its actors, nor the product of his confine, confinement. And therefore, the judge denied the defendant's motion to suppress the statements. In other words, a jury will get to hear all of it. And the judge said she did not find the defense team's argument about Allen's mental illness defense to be persuasive. What impact will all this have on the upcoming trial? Here's 13 News legal analyst Katie Jackson Lindsay to explain. That's an advantage for the state. There's no question about it. Any prosecutor would love to have a confession on a case. And so while it puts the defense in a position to defend something more, um, it gives the state an extreme advantage in showing, hey, we know we have the right guy because even the guy told you that he's the right guy. Now at trial, Jackson Lindsay expects the defense will try to explain why Allen's confessions were coerced and don't match evidence at the crime scene. Now there's one other big ruling that we are still waiting on. Richard Allen's attorneys want to tell a jury about evidence that might point to someone other than Richard Allen committing the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German. The prosecutor has asked the judge to suppress that information so the jury can't hear about it. The judge is expected to issue that ruling by the end of the week, and we'll certainly have it for you when she does. In the newsroom, I'm Bob Siegel, 13 Investigates. All right, Bob, thanks so much. Also tonight, alarming, unacceptable, and unsafe. That's how some teachers and parents are describing the conditions inside the new Broad Ripple Middle School. Now, right now, IPS is hosting a school board meeting where they're talking about those concerns. Samantha Johnson tonight looks into what we've learned so far. Week four of classes just about in the books for middle schoolers here in Broad Ripple, the new school in the old Broad Ripple High School. It's sat empty since 2017 and it's now been given new life, but parents and teachers say this building simply wasn't ready to reopen and they say that's just the start of the problems they're seeing inside. Across eight pages of written public comment for Thursday's meeting, a dozen complaints. Teachers saying, quote, the building is not properly functioning and is not safe. I am scared to send my kids into the hall for passing periods. Another adding, we are losing control. On the list of concerns, 18 classrooms without working phones or PA systems in case of emergency. Something Principal Tiffany Robinson says is a contractor error. So our team has been working relentlessly to install the new wiring and getting the classrooms up and functioning. Another concern, fights and violence among kids at school. Parents saying, quote, children are scared to attend school. One parent of two middle schoolers calling the situation unacceptable. It, it's all about us working together, making sure safety is a shared responsibility. Robinson tells me Broad Ripple Middle School does have on-site security and police, along with a new camera system inside and out. 
And when it comes to the culture of the school, Robinson says her team is still figuring out the new blend of students as part of the district's Rebuilding Stronger plan. I would send my own children along with the hope of others will continue to send their students here. In Broad Ripple, Samantha Johnson, 13 News. So again, there's a school board meeting tonight. It started just a few minutes ago. We'll provide you an update of what happened here on 13 News at 11. Also, in the meantime, if you'd like to read more, we have linked the full document of concerns that have been shared so far at WTHR.com. Angela? Amory, slow moving storms with heavy rain, localized flooding and lots of lightning. Let's get to live Doppler 13 radar. Some of these storms drifting slowly to the north, covering good part of Marion County right now from east side of Indianapolis through Beach Grove up toward Lawrence and Broad Ripple. I've got another cell in between Brownsburg and Avon just below severe limits, but again, lots of lightning and very heavy rain. They've been in weather delays with women's soccer uh, at IU and there is another cell just north of Bloomington. In addition to the storms, we've got a high heat, high humidity, still feeling like close to 100 across parts of central Indiana. Thank you, Angela. Well, there's a new memorial that's in Westfield right now. It's organized to remember the still unknown number of victims of a suspected serial killer. Our Rich Knight takes us to the dedication of that monument that now honors nine men with more expected. This limestone monument was donated by the He Knows Your Name Ministry at Hamilton Memorial Park in Westfield, just four miles from Fox Hollow Farm. That's where 10,000 human remains have been located on 18 acres from presumed murders more than 30 years ago. Only nine men have been identified. Doing this today does not undo the horror of this tragedy and the devastation of what this has done to these families. But it is rewriting a chapter in that story and bringing a pathway of healing. The cremated remains of Jeffrey Allen Jones and Allen Lee Livingston were placed in the memorial Thursday. But this is now a permanent marker where any of the remains of any of the victims can find a permanent resting place. To be able to look forward to the memories that we had that were positive. So that way we can allow them, um, the victims, my personal family, to, to continue to live, in other words, um, in the way that we remember them and not just stuck in that one moment that was a tragedy. A place to rest in peace. In Westfield, Rich Knight, 13 News. IMPD confirmed today they have now started increasing patrols along Fall Creek Trail after two women were attacked. Those attacks took place within three weeks of each other. In both cases, the women say a man came up to them with a combat knife, forcing them to walk down the trail. Thankfully, both women were able to escape. IMPD says they have increased patrols, and that will continue for the foreseeable future. Right now, we are just days away from construction starting on the Henry Street Bridge. This will connect downtown to the near west side over the White River downtown. Now, earlier this year, you might remember, there were a lot of concerns about human remains being discovered in that area from the city's first public cemetery. Well, tonight, our Marion County reporter Lauren Costick shares the next steps in this very long-awaited development project. After years of waiting, the city is ready to start construction of the Henry Street Bridge, connecting the near west side to downtown. DPW Director Brandon Herget said it's part of the White River Innovation District and an agreement with Alonco to support its new headquarters. It's going to be a major cultural destination. It's going to be an important focal point for the city, and it's going to be an important asset for the near west side. Earlier this year, the project faced pushback following the discovery of human remains from the former Green Lawn Cemetery. Since then, the city has promised to excavate the area first. The powers to be have decided the bridge will be built, and this is probably the best option is to actually go in and actively seek out those that are left behind and move them. The plan is to start construction on the west side of the river next week and then move to the east side after the excavation is complete. And construction for the Henry Street Bridge is expected to be completed by fall of 2026. In Indianapolis, Lauren Costick, 13 News. Six days in a row in the 90s. One more on the way. More on the milder air coming in your forecast. Months after protests took over part of IU's campus, the university is now facing a new lawsuit. Tonight we want to dig into how fallout from those demonstrations 
has now led to legal action. But first on this Thursday night, Indy Animal Care Services concerned for the welfare of dozens of animals. We'll share what they need from you after a virus outbreak hits the shelter. It's coming up next here on 13 News at 6.